The impending crisis referred to in the title of this chapter is, of course, the Civil War. Now, the question we would answer is, is uh, not so much why did we have a Civil War, but why did we have a Civil War at this point? Sectionalism had always existed in the United States. Uh, originally, of course, it was an East-West sectionalism. That's what Washington warned about. But by the early 1800s, New England is threatening to, to secede from the Union. Uh, they do this again in 1815. You may remember the Hartford Convention after the War of 1812. Um, we had the, the, uh, uh, the, the, the uh, nullification crisis with Calhoun and Jackson, where South Carolina talked about secession. But we had always held it together. So what happened? What happened there uh, in the 1850s that leads to the Civil War in 1861? Well, um, you do have factors like uh, the growing, yet still tiny, abolitionist movement in the North. Remember, abolitionists ending slavery completely immediately. The, the increasing insecurity and defensiveness of the South. But the key element, the one that's most often overlooked, is the expansion of America into the West. And that's really what this chapter is going to be largely about. And how, while that seems like a good thing, it was really a disaster. We're going to talk a lot about this painting, by the way, in class. So... Uh, soak it in. This painting is called a Destiny Leading the People. Um, and it's a, we usually associate it with that idea of manifest destiny, which we'll talk about. In the 1840s, we're going to add a million square miles of land. And we are more or less going to end up with what is today the mainland a contiguous United States. That means everything but Alaska and um, Hawaii. And we did develop a sense, and I think that sense was there from the very beginning, to be honest with you, but it became greater and greater of a manifest destiny, that America had a destiny to spread itself from one coast to the other, from the Atlantic to the Pacific. And I think if you would ask most people at the time, they would have included Canada and Mexico in this destiny, although it's not going to work out that way yet. Um, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, and so they, a lot of Americans looked at the map and saw this part of Mexico that's brown and, and red and uh, uh, the Gadsden part down there, and saw that as kind of future America, and, and, and the purple part, Oregon as well. And so this chapter is really, how do we make that real? In fact, the phrase manifest destiny, destiny of course means, you know, what is it bound to happen. But manifest is a word you're less familiar with, I'm sure, and that means made to make something real. So if I have an idea and I make that idea real, if I write a book, I manifested that book. If I say something, I manifested what I was thinking about saying. And so what this means is destiny made real. Now, what is this based on? What is this idea of manifest destiny based on? Well, it's a sense of American pride. We've been talking really since the War of 1812 about this increasing idea that America is special, that America is better than everywhere else. Nationalism related to this. We had a great uh, a sense of ourselves as being the freest, best place on earth, better than Europe where they, the, the, the people were still oppressed. Keep in mind those utopian movements of the 1820s and 30s and 40s we talked about in, in chapter 12. Um, this, this, this idea that we are going to make the world perfect, that we, America, will redeem the sins of the old world. Well, that comes in play here as, as we decide to spread ourselves, um, to bring the greatness that is America to people whether they want it or not. Um, religion. Uh, there's a religious element to this too. Remember, much of this land that we're going to be taking here is controlled by Catholics. And we don't really look kindly upon Catholics. We think Protestantism is way better. And so there's a religious element that we're going to spread in and uh, 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 kind of free these people in that way too. This was called the white man's burden. Now the white man's burden is, is originally a British term. But it's this idea that there are people out there whose lives could be improved by being controlled by us. So we will do you a favor, remove your current government, replace it with us because our system, because our country is simply better. We called it the Empire of Liberty, um, and, and uh, this was what many Americans uh, assumed the future would be. Some Americans, like Henry Clay, for example, realized that if we expanded west, we would reignite the slavery debate. Remember, the Missouri Compromise had drawn that line there on the bottom of Missouri and said no slavery north of this line. Well, if we take over everything that's Texas and Mexican Session and the Gaston Purchase here, then we expand slavery that much further. And it really upsets the balance that currently is being maintained. Uh, and so, so some Americans knew by the 1840s, really, that if we did this, that we were going to create bigger problems. But most people ignored that. The first goal 
uh, were Texas and Oregon, though. That, that was the first places we're going to look to for expansion.